What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to create a suspended modern light fixture inside of SketchUp. If you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure you check out my SketchUp tips guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a modern light fixture. It's basically made up of a pair of suspended rings. And then uh, I'm also gonna show you how to split up the materials in that. So that if you wanted to take that to like Enscape or another rendering program, you could add like an emissive material or something like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle. And the circle is just gonna set the size of um, the the light fixture that we're going to create. And so one thing you might want to think about doing when you first activate the circle tool is uh, you may want to come in and when you activate this tool, type in a number of sides that you want. So like right now, mine's probably defaulting to like 12 sides. I'm probably going to type in 24 and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to create a 24 sided circle. And even in this case, what we might do is we might take that and adjust our number of segments up to something like 48 because we want this to be kind of a smooth edge because we're going to extrude an object along it in order to create our light fixture. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a standing up circle along this path. And so in order to do that, all you need to do is tap the C key and then tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. That's going to allow us to draw a circle right here. So you can see how I lock that up and down so that now I can come in here and I can create this circle centered on this line so that we can use it as a path in order to extrude it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the follow me tool and extrude it along this path like this. But before we do that, um, first of all, I'm going to delete out the face in here. But what we need to do is we need to use the scale tool in order to uh, make this a little bit taller. So um, because this isn't really going to be a circular shape, it's more going to be like a a shape that's been distorted a little bit so that it has kind of a flatter piece on the edge here. And so all we're going to do is just select this circle and then tap the S key to turn the scale tool on. And then I'm just going to hold the control key. That's going to turn on about center mode. And I'm just going to use this to extrude this up or uh, scale this up kind of like this. And so you can see how now what I have in here is instead of having a circle, I have kind of this oval shape, which is more what we want. And depending on the shape that you're trying to create in here, you might get a little bit more creative with the way that you do that. I'm good with what we did here for right now. But all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this path or this edge. Then I'm going to activate the follow me tool to extrude this along that path. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to break this up so that I can apply different materials to it. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use hidden geometry. So if I go to view and hidden geometry, you can see how this contains all the geometry that's inside of this ring. Well, what we want to do is we want to take a loop all the way around here and we want to unsoften it so that we'll have two separate faces in here. And so in order to do that, we're going to go in and the easiest way to do this is to turn on parallel projection mode. So that's a camera mode where there's no perspective anymore. And we're just going to click on the button for front view. So with front view, because there's no longer any perspective, that means that we can come in here and we can drag a box across this like this. Well, when we do that, it's only going to pick up the edges that are directly behind that. And so we can just go in here and we can unsoften that. So when we unsoften that and we turn hidden geometry off, you can see how that means we've unsoftened the edges all the way along this back side and along this front side. And so now this face is separate from this face. And so we're going to go down and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So we're just going to select this ring or this edge loop. And we're going to uncheck the box for soften. So now if I turn off hidden geometry, you can see how I have all of these faces separated from each other inside of this model. And so now we're, we're, done with, uh, we're done with parallel projection mode, so we can go back into perspective mode. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply materials to this. And so this is a material that I've downloaded. You can use whatever material you want. And you're going to notice that this doesn't get mapped very well to this face. The reason it's not getting mapped very well to this face is because there's no UV mapping in here, meaning that uh, SketchUp doesn't really know what to do with this. So it's just trying to apply 
each the material to each one of these individual faces, but you can see how it's not doing a very good job. And so depending on what you're trying to do, you could either leave this, um, which is a completely acceptable option for what we're trying to do here, or we could use an extension inside the Fredo tools tool set called through paint. What through paint does is through paint comes in here and it UV maps or it comes in here and it maps materials on faces inside of SketchUp. And so you can see how if I go up here and select UV painting and I select this first option, you can see how it takes this material and it kind of maps it along this face so you get a much smoother, better looking material. Then you could use the same thing on, this, on the back side of this face as well. So the other thing I'm probably going to do with this object is instead of having the default model or material applied on here, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a white material to it. And the reason for that if I select like this color M00 and apply that to both of these is then when we use an extension like Enscape to render this so if I was to do that real quick what we would do is we would select this white material like this and we would make it an emissive material meaning it would emit light so we would use it to light our model so if I drag my Enscape rendering window over here, because we've applied a white material in here, we can uh, basically tell Enscape to use that white material to light your model. And obviously this doesn't look super good right now, but um, because we've set up our textures this way, it's a lot easier for you to go into a rendering program later with something like that if you want to do that. So probably the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and first of all, I'm going to make it a group and you could probably make it a component as well but I'm going to make a copy of it so I'm just gonna use the move tool or I'm gonna select my object I'm gonna tap the M key to activate the move tool and then I'm gonna tap the control key to activate copy mode and then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna scale this second one down and I'm gonna move it back so that it's kinda centered inside of this object so once we do that maybe scale it back up a little bit more. You can see how we have these two rings in here. Well now we can just use the move tool and click on these little uh, targets. And rotate these objects in place. So select it, tap the M key, then we'll rotate this one, kind of this way, and then this way. So what that gives us is that gives us these two rings inside of SketchUp. And then from there, kind of the last thing you could do if you wanted to is you could figure out you could figure out the point that you want these to be suspended from. And probably what I would do in this case is I would just uh, go to straight up and down mode. And then go to my front view. And I would just draw a line straight up and down to give me kind of a target for where I think these are going to be suspended from. And then you could just find a point where you think these would be suspended from and you need to be a little bit careful that it doesn't go through your object so maybe this would get suspended from maybe a little higher up here or something like that but you could draw some suspension lines like this and then you could either draw a circle and extrude it along these paths or you can use an extension like uh, lines to tubes and you could use lines to tubes To create a tube along each one of these so you can kind of simulate the wires that you would have hanging this up and down. And so once you've done that, and those may even be a little bit thick now that I think about it, you could put them all in a group or a component. So you could make this something like suspended light. So, and then once you do this, you can scale it up and down depending on what size you want it to be. You could use the scale tool in order to do that. 
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, have you created anything like this in SketchUp? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.